Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So, in this meeting we will So, talk before about we talk air about the air traffic control. control We should have to know about the VFR and the IFR The VFR is Visual Flight Rules And the IFR is Instrument Flight Rules So, when we want to decide what time to use VFR and what time to use IFR is depend on weather related flight conditions. There are two kind of weather related flight conditions. The first is sailing. So a sailing is the maximum density altitude an aircraft can reach under a set of conditions as determined by its flight envelope and the second is visibility so the visual flight rules requires pilot to follow the rules and regulations of operating an aircraft in weather conditions that are good enough for the pilot to see the horizon and where the aircraft is going so the keyword is uh, the pilot will fly an aircraft in a good condition of weather so the pilot can see the horizon and the VFR requires a sailing greater than 3000 feet AGL or above ground level and visibility that's greater than 5 miles and the VFR use visual guide approach or VGA that we have talked about this in last meeting And the second is instrument flight rules. IFR is to fly down using aircraft instruments instead of depending solely on the visual of the pilot outside the aircraft. The IFR used in low visibility scenarios such as bad weather, inside a cloud, or at night time. And the IFR requires a sailing less than 1,000 feet above ground level or AGL and or visibility of fewer than 3 miles. Instrument reading requires a lot more flight trainings and ground school trainings in comparison to VFR. So the IFR is a little bit complicated than the visual flight rules because uh, if the pilot sh uh, the pilot used the instrument flight rules, there are an equipment that the pilot should have to learn about it more than when the visual flight rules because the pilot just can see uh, what be what what in front of uh, the aircraft, but the inst instrument flight rules should have to know about the equipment and how to use it and the instrument flight rules will use air traffic control as a guidance so this is why we should have to know about the air traffic control because the air traffic control will be used when the pilot use the instrument flight rules Next, the air traffic control. No, now we will talk about the air traffic control and its purpose. So basically, there are two purpose, two big purpose that air traffic control has. So the first is 
the safety. The air traffic control is to control air traffic avoiding collision between aircrafts or other obstacles. So, as we know that in the sky there are many aircraft that crossing the sky. So, if the traffic the air traffic control is not good enough, so that may be dangerous for the aircraft to cross at the sky because sometimes they don't know what behind behind the aircraft or what in front of the aircraft because of the bad weather conditions or at night so the air traffic control will help to control the air traffic avoiding collision there are some cases of the collision between aircraft or a near near mid-air collision that we will talk about it in next slide but the safety is uh, is the first purpose for the air traffic control but the the other side we should have to maintain the efficiency so the air traffic control purpose is to maintain sufficient capacity of movement in heavily traffic areas so we should have to consider the safety and the efficiency the safety is first but in the other side the efficiency should have to maintain too because if we make the movement of the aircraft to safety so maybe the distance between the aircraft is so far like one day like in one day they should have to have one aircraft per day because of the safety it's impossible because there are the efficiency that should have to be maintained because uh, we can't because uh, we have a lot of or a high demand of the flight so we should have to talk about the safety and we should have to also talk about the efficiency so this is the air traffic control purpose talk about the safety I will give you a case about near mid-air collision in Japan so there are two aircrafts the aircraft A that we call with flight number 907 and the aircraft B the, no the flight number 958 so the aircraft A was climbing above Shizuoka prefecture then a conflict alert was issued on the air traffic control radar display of Tokyo area control tower because aircraft B was approaching from the west at the same flight level as aircraft A so in this picture we can see the one is the aircraft A and the other one is the aircraft B an air traffic controller mistook the flight number of aircraft A and aircraft B and advised aircraft A to descend so in this point aircraft A received ACC instruction to descend also resolution advisory or RA indicating to climb was issued by T 
CAS or Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System equipped on Aircraft A just after the ATC instruction, Aircraft A continued descending maneuver in accordance with ATC instruction. So in this point, after the instruction of the ACC, an RA or resolution advisory was issued during readback. But uh, so the TCAS, the TCAS instruct to climb. But in contrast, aircraft A continue descending in accordance with ATC instruction. As the RA indicating to descend was issued by TCAS equipped on aircraft B, aircraft B descend in accordance with RA. So in this point, from the aircraft B, the RA from TCAS was issued and instruct to descend. So the aircraft B following the instruction from the RA to descend while the aircraft A is descend following the ATC instruction and ignoring the RA from TCAS that the aircraft A should have to climb so it make this case worse so they they are in the same uh, flight level because the because they are descent and aircraft A and aircraft B were approaching very close to each other while both airplanes were visually recognized by each other so in this point the aircraft A and aircraft B approaching very close and both airplane airplanes were visually recognized by each other so fortunately they can fly using VFR or, or visual flight instruments so they can see what's in front of the aircraft so both airplanes made avoidance maneuvers by visual observations of the other airplane just before crossing each other's flight path. On that occasion, since aircraft A made a rapid descent in order to pass under aircraft B just before crossing, many passengers and cabin attendants of aircraft A got in. So you can see here, the aircraft A have a descent maneuver to to pass under the aircraft B so it's really immediately and it's uh, in in the in the short time so it may make the passengers and cabin attendants injured so after that, aircraft A returned to Tokyo International Port with ATC authorization from Tokyo ACC because there are so many injured so they go back to the Tokyo International Airport. So in this case, we can see how dangerous if the air traffic controller mistook the flight number. So so the air traffic controller uh, have a really significant or have a really important position to guidance to make a guidance for the pilot in when they have a flight There are 
two type of air traffic control. The first is air traffic control in terminal and the second is air traffic control in route flight. So air traffic control in terminal in the immediate area of the terminal special aids are necessary to assist in the operation of landing and takeoff and to provide safe navigation in the crowded airspace because because the airspace near the terminal is usually crowded because there are so many aircraft that take off or landing so it may be really crowded and the second is air, air traffic control in route flight is operating outside terminal areas permits in flight aircraft to achieve accurate navigation using instruments only so in uh, the VFR or visual flight rules they won't use the this air traffic control in route flight but when the flight is used the IFR or instrument flight rules the air traffic control will be used to control or to help the pilot control the aircraft is air traffic control facilities one of the air traffic control facilities is ADCD or air traffic control tower as we can see here this is the picture of the air traffic control tower usually the ADCD located in the airport like here so the ADCD is facilities to supervise direct and monitor the traffic within the airport area. The ATCD provides a traffic control function for aircraft arriving or departing from an airport for a 5 to 15 miles radius. The tower is responsible for issuing clearance to all departing aircraft providing pilots with information on wind, temperature, barometric pressure, and operating condition at the airport, and for the control of all aircraft on the ground except in the maneuvering area immediately adjacent to the aircraft parking positions called the ramp area. So, the ADCD a traffic control tower is a facility to supervise, direct, and monitor the traffic. The one who gives the instruction is the air traffic controller. So in Indonesia, we have AirNav Indonesia or LPPNPI, Lembaga Penyelenggara Pelayanan Navigasi Penerbangan Indonesia. So, the main business segment of AirNav Indonesia is provision of national and international air navigation services in line with the prevailing standards to achieve efficiency and effectiveness in aviation. One of its services is air navigation control. The air navigation control service are divided into three parts. The first is aerodrome control service that provide air traffic control service, flight information service, and alerting service for aircraft that are operating or present in the vicinity of the aerodrome, such as takeoff, landing, taxiing, and other activities within the maneuvering area, which are performed at the control tower. The second is approach control service that provide air traffic control service, flight information service, and alerting service provide to aircraft that are in the airspace in the vicinity of the aerodrome, whether conducting approach 
or just having taken off, particularly for instrument flight activities that follow the instrument flight rules or IFR. The third is area control service that provide air traffic control service, flight information service, and alerting service provided to, pl to pilot that are engaged in en route flight, especially those categorized at, as control flights. So, all of the ATCT or air traffic control tower and ATC or air traffic controller in every airport in the entire Indonesia is under the management of the AirNav Indonesia. So before we have AirNav Indonesia, the ATCD and the ATC, the air traffic control tower and air traffic controller is under the management of PT Angkasa Pura 1 and PT Angkasa Pura 2. But after that, the ICAO said that Indonesian aviation is not good enough back then, so the ICAO gives an advice to Indonesia to make uh, in an independent an independent an in uh, an independent for the navigation separated from the PT Angkasa Pura 1 and PT Angkasa Pura 2 or the one who maintain the airport so it divided into two the first is Angkasa Pura 1 and Angkasa Pura 2 that manage the operation of the aircraft and the other one is the AirNav Indonesia to manage the navigation in Indonesia to manage air navigation in Indonesia